Hey folks, you know every once in a while you stumble across something that you wish you had stumbled across about 20 years earlier. This is one of those ideas and I like to stress how sharing ideas is, is probably what's going to save us. <laughs> but this was an idea that certainly wasn't mine. It was, I got this idea from a fellow named Jeff from Missouri Wind and Solar and I'll put a link in the description down below to this his YouTube channel. He has lots of interesting, informative ideas, helpful ideas that help us to save some money, save some energy, and they're practical and inexpensive. This is one of those ideas. Now I've thought many times about venting the heat from the dryer, our electric dryer, you're not going to vent the gas dryer inside, of course, but to vent it in the house. But I always thought that yeah, you're going to have lint. You know, you put a nylon stocking over the end or something. It'll both plug up quickly and you're going to end up with just fine lint particles in your house and it's not worth it. Well, this idea eliminates that concern and all it is, and I'll take you around after a bit and show you exactly how I made my version of it. But this is just the four inch dryer vent is directed into a, in this case, I used a three and a half gallon bucket. They use five gallon buckets. Generally they're more common, but it's filled about two thirds full with water. So the heated air from the dryer then blows into that water and moistens that lint and it sinks to the bottom. So you need enough holes in the top, and again I'll show you later, to basically provide about the same surface area as, as the hole in the top. But there are a number of reasons for this, why this is a good idea. Number one, of course, is you're not blowing all that heated air into the great outdoors. The other is that in the winter, especially here in northern Minnesota, we need more humidity in our house. And the other thing is when this dryer is pulling air into it, heating it in that chamber and then blowing it outdoors, that air is coming from the house. And when we're blowing that large volume of air outdoors, the makeup air has to come from somewhere. And that's coming from every little hole or crack in our walls and our windows and doors. It's pulling outside, cold outside air into the house. Otherwise you'd end up creating a vacuum in the house. So there's like three good reasons why it's a good idea in the winter to vent the dryer into the living space. And ideally you'd probably put this further from the dryer and it admittedly does create quite a bit of humidity in the laundry room here, but it's, it's short lived and we have a ceiling fan out in the family room out here and keep the door open and it, it disappears quickly. It doesn't get overwhelmingly humid. So let me take you around and show you how I bid, did my version of a indoor dryer vent. So I just took a lid, the standard lid that I bought, and I, I made a mark like every other one of these little reinforcing ribs just with a marker and then I took a probably like an eighth inch drill bit and then I drilled a pilot hole at each of those and then I reamed these out with a one inch step bit but you could certainly just use a speed bit and this is a one inch so I ended up with basically about the same number or same area as this. Now this is just a, a 
coupler that I bought at Menards and this is the portion that connects to the vent, the four inch aluminum, the aluminum flexible aluminum vent. So this part is just hose clamped onto the dryer vent and then it it just snaps into place on the lid so you can it's removable. So then down in the bucket, see if I can reach down in there. Again, we have not Now look at that. So this is all lint that has collected in the in the bottom of the bucket. And we have I haven't changed the water yet. We've only been using this for a couple months and we don't do tons of laundry. But if it gets too grungy or too full of lint, you just take it out and dump it out in the woods and and uh, refill it with clean water. So what I did when I attached this coupler thing, I, it, there's a flange on it, and I used 3 8 inch aluminum rivets. I think he just used screws, but cer certainly can do that. And then I used washers on the bottom and then just riveted it on. I put some butyl rubber tape in there, which certainly is probably overkill. I think it's necessary. But nice and clean operation and really works slick. We're going to fire up a load of laundry here and I'll show you this thing in action. So, so kind of starting to feel like a laundromat in here. So we have the dryer running. I just want to check and see here. It's like that just says like 82 degrees. I don't I think it gets hotter than that. And then it's like a hundred and hundred and five degree, hundred hundred degree air that's coming out of this thing. So you can all the way around just a nice gentle flow of air up. And let's see if this will focus here. There we go. So you can see that this is just the four inch bent aluminum that I put just along this shelf. Now, what, what I'll do now in the summer is I will reinstall this short section that'll vent outside. But in the summer, we seldom use the dryer. We use our solar and wind powered dryer outside the clothesline. So in the winter we really tend not to use the dryer an awful lot. We dry a lot of our clothes just over our Steffes thermal storage heater which is off-peak electric. It stores heat during the times when the power is shut off so it's, that's what we heat the house with for unless it gets super cold and we have to use supplemental propane but we also have a drying rack and this has a fan underneath that blows warm air continuously and does a pretty good job of drying the clothes. When it gets 20 below, 30 below or really windy we fire up this propane stove that supplements our heat. So there you have it. That's just my take on somebody else's idea something that I finally found out about and put it to good use and I wanted to make this video to share with other folks who may not have heard about how to do this from Missouri Wind and Solar and other folks who very selflessly share ideas with the only reward being knowing that they're helping somebody else to do something like save energy in the winter so feels pretty good so until next time is mark again with backwood basics let's uh let's share ideas together <laughs>